Hello. And you have uh, tuned into the Ties That Bind, a family meeting. And I am your host, Paula, and I am your griotis, which is a historian slash storyteller in our ancient African um, country. And I'm going to introduce you to our co-host, Tiffany. Hi, I'm and Tiffany, Jane. and I'm the strategizer. Mm-hmm. Okay, and James? Hi, I'm James, and I'm known as The Bridge. Okay, and we're going to get into it today. Um, we're talking, we're, this is a, the second part of what we started last week. And what's the name of it, Tiffany? The, the name of the series has been code switching and surviving in white corporate America. Uh-huh. Um, today, today's subtopic is going to be the fight for good hair led by James. Right. So it's going to be led by James. And so we're not going to go through a whole lot of uh, fanfare today. So we're going to go straight into James, and then we'll do our thing. James? Yes, hello, family. I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, Today we're going to get on the topic of the fight for good hair. Uh, Like Tiffany was saying earlier, we were discussing uh, things like code switching and, and of course, surviving in white corporate America and how people had to change, like, literally either physically, uh, internally, change who they are in order to survive in the uh, specific environment that they were in at that time. Uh, we all know that, uh, especially as black folks here in America, uh, wherever we go, we have to pretty much t- change our our character um, from from place to place, depending on who you're dealing with at the time. So right. uh, last episode, I brought up a topic at towards the end of the show. Um, is wearing weave considered a form of code switching. And so this is what brings us here today. So I really wanted to get into that. I wanted to share a little bit of history about uh, weaves. I wanted to see exactly uh, where we are now, uh, how do we get to the place that we're, that we're in right now when it comes to weave. It's not all bad. It's also not all the way good. But I just wanted to talk and discuss it. All right, so uh, uh, the first thing I want to talk about a little bit was the history. Now, um, me doing a little bit of research, and I, I already knew this, but I also wanted to have some uh, uh, some documentation on showing that even in ancient times, when you go back to ancient Egypt, you see that people wore weaves or or a type of wig, right? And it, yeah. and it was normally during like ceremonies and uh, some type of festival or something like that, that they would, they would wear these uh, wigs or weaves on their head. But I also want people to know that this wasn't a trend that started here in America. Uh, I don't think it, it was always meant to be a thing like uh, code switching in a sense. I thought it was all, I think it was also meant to be a form of uh, uh, a form of celebration, in a sense. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to go over that, uh, and I did send a link out to our other uh, host and, our, and the other co-host. I want to know: Did you get a chance to watch that link, and what did you think about that? Uh, which link are you talking? Because well, we shared quite a few links. Yeah, I, I put the link on the actual page on the, our shared page that we have here on the side. Mm-hmm. He's talking about the, um, the... the YouTube video. Uh-huh. From from uh from Africa. I think he's talking about Tiffany. I know he's talking about. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, to, for me, um it it was uh, even though I, I I had a kind of an understanding that these things that we're doing they're not really new. It was kind of like to see how far it's come from its original purpose. Mm-hmm. It's kind of mystifying mm-hmm. right. to me to, how it went from like you said kind of being like, you know, the, the, your hair is your crown. And your glory, it went mm-hmm. from being that to yeah. being almost like a mask. Mm-hmm. Right, right. To to a map? Did you say a map? A, a mask, like hiding who they, who we as as black people really are. Like uh, it, it's like we we're ashamed mm-hmm. of our natural ha- our natural curl pattern, so we cover it up with this, you know, straight 
wavy Hawaiian silky mop on our heads. Right. Right. But I think um, I um um. Uh, oh, I don't want to interrupt you. Did, were you finished or? Oh, I'm I don't finished. Want to interrupt. I'm sorry. No, yeah, I, I'm. I'm agreeing. With, I'm. I'm with you on that because I didn't even think about that until you brought it up. That that is a. I, I didn't have the words for it, but it's it's gone from having a purpose to just the purpose now is because we have been shamed into what we already what naturally grows out grows out of our hair from from the slavery times and. Mm-hmm. And so now we're sort of like going into another era, and uh-huh. but it's still. I remember. I'm, I'm gonna take it down to myself because I have worn weaves, but it wasn't because I was trying to hide my hair. It was just like I was trying to get another air, uh, hairstyle, and I needed that to, to boost it a little bit. And then it got to the point where you would take it out, and then you looked funny. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. because you didn't, I didn't realize that it really was taking your hair out. It was thinning your hair. Sure. And so that's why, and then you would put it in a little more. And then I have seen people, and I, I don't want to call their names because these are personal people. They've been using the weave for so long, and now they've got this thing that they glue their hair in. <laughs> so mm-hmm. now you don't even have to see their roots yeah. or anything. <clears throat> and I was watching the show the other, the other night, and... The woman had the stuff glued into her hair, and you could see where her edges started, but there was nothing but where you know how your hair looks. Uh, the, your your hair underneath your hair is a little bit uh, lighter. Mm-hmm. Like she didn't now, blend it. She didn't blend the texture and color. N- no, her hair was gone, and she was just oh. uh, weaving it into the hair that she had left. So her hair. Went from being close to the to the the crown in your on your forehead to way mm-hmm. back, and she and wow. she, because now yeah, and I'm just like, why are you doing this? Why what is the and see what the and what we don't and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna leave this because I know James had a a point. I'm gonna go back to what James was talking about because he was talking about the ancient Africans and them wearing um, weaves. Sometimes it was, it was a lot of it, it depends on what, uh, how much money you had and what class you were of how you mm-hmm. were the weave. And then, mm-hmm. then the, right. the higher up, uh, they had um, they had horse hair. They had the straighter mm-hmm. hair, and then they had the point where they were braided and they would do stuff like that. But this was, they called this the earth orthodox. When they brought us here to this country, we mm-hmm. uh, practiced that original religion. And mm-hmm. the women, they they believed that the hair was, they didn't believe the, in hair per se because it, it would mm-hmm. get stuff in it and you were constantly dealing with it and stuff like that. So the Orthodox people, the, even now the Orthodox Jews, Jewish women, they shave all their hair off and they don wigs. And that's what they did back then. And then it went from there Mm -hmm. to like, okay, then that's cool. Then that's going to be – and now then we get to America. They're telling you, you little nappy head, you little this, that, and the other, you you little this, this. And everything was back to your hair color, your your hair texture, your skin color, and your Mm -hmm. body. And now Mm -hmm. all that stuff that they talked about us for having, (laughs) well, we know that the – we know that. So that is – that was to me even re- seeing that again because I remember when I first introduced that in college, and uh, mm-hmm. she maybe had four or five black kids in there, and they just swore I was lying. And the, and who oh, I had a teacher that told me I was just like, and the re- reason that she gave me that chapter is for mm-hmm. in her mind. Let me give you the statement that she gave me, and I was just like, you're saying that all this came from Belgium and it came from here, there, and everywhere. I said, but this is the African influence. I said, where are the black people? Right. Where are the Africans? Uh, there were uh, there were no black people at that time. And I was like, <laughs> oh. okay. I, I just said, just she was a teacher. She was a uh, she was our instructor. I was just like, then mm-hmm. what did we do? Did we did we spent uh, come out of the mud or something? So what are you talking about? And so 
I'm I'm giving her the what for in front of everybody, and then all oh, the black people got really quiet because I'm acting mm-hmm. up, you know. And, and no, I, no, and you I make other you make other white people feel uncomfortable. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, I cannot believe you said that. And so I'm telling her, uh-huh. I said, what we did this, this, and that, and she says, No, I don't think so. And so when she gave us. And this was her her scheme. She's like, I want everyone to take a chapter in the hour, and the, uh, it was something we were talking about cultures, and from the book. And then um, you, uh, I want you to teach the class on that. So mm-hmm. I didn't choose the chapter. She gave it to me, and guess what? It was on. It was on the African thing. So mm-hmm. you know, we had a house full of books and encyclopedias and. So that's what I did. I went home and I researched and I did everything. I even brought the book with me because you had to go, you had to cite um, where you got it from, you know, da 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 da, to to make sure that what you did it was it was actual and factual. Right. And I got up there and I started talking and everybody's looking at me like, oh, okay, here she goes again. They're, they're, oh my goodness gracious, da da da. And teacher looking at me like, mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Then when I started telling her about the 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 Nubians and the what who who they have now Wonder Woman is this now what what is she supposed to be Amazon, this was Amazonians, a, Amazonians. yes yes it, they called it something mm-hmm. else and then it was a it was a whole tribe of women who who were in charge and they had their and they mm-hmm. had it and I and they was she was looking at me like and I cited everything what I got it from I got it from magazines I got and she was like with her mouth agape. You know how they do that thing right. with their uh, bottom lip tucked in and the teeth sticking over? I, oh, oh. I'm just like, okay, okay, what is it? And then uh, now the four little black people we had in the class are going to come to me later, whisper, I didn't know that. And I was just like, okay, read, okay. Uh, I remember thinking, I, I just turned into my dad, read it for right. yourself. I gave y'all, mm-hmm. what, you know, it's just, and that's why he made us read, and that's why he told us, don't ask me what it means. Go and read it and figure it and come back and tell me what it means. If you can't say right. and you don't, and even now, what they used to do then, they don't do it anymore. But um, I'm going off the, the, off the script. But that is what I'm talking about. That is where, that's how we got back. That's how we got, we started now, we see, but we still don't see. Like Tiffany said, we right. still, we're still wearing it as a mask. And so uh, I'm going to turn it back over to you, Jim. <laughs> wow. Okay, so, uh, yeah, sp- and speaking of that, because I think knowledge is, is, is one of the keys that we definitely need to hold on to and uh, to, uh-huh. to open the doors that we need to understand why we do certain things. So, you know, coming up, you know, this is behavior that was taught all the way from slavery, right? Yeah. Um, even up, even up to current times, you know, I remember uh, some some of the older ladies in my life, whether it was my mom or I never, I don't know if I've really seen my grandmother say too much about it, but you know, she always talk about naps and cocoa buds and you know those mm-hmm. those are beady beads, you know, yeah, these yeah. are all names for uh for for nappy hair, and you know, and I think yeah. She was talking about BDB. Uh huh. Uh huh. And, and you know, these are the words that we hear, and you just kind of, yeah. when you hear stuff like that, it, it makes you feel uncomfortable with your hair. So, right, I right. mean, w- with your you guys growing up, and I'll start with Tiffany, uh, how, do you, how did you feel about your own hair um, coming up, and what were you told about your hair? Because uh, I know recently you've been going natural for, for how many years now? Uh, eight years now. Eight years now. So wow. so eight years now you've been going natural. But before mm-hmm. that, before that change of going natural, I mean this kinda of walked me through it. What what was you what were you going through as mm-hmm. far as your your hair is concerned? And what brought you to the place where you're like, Okay, I want to go natural? Okay, so first of all I really hate the term go natural because it's, it's, mm-hmm. to me it feels like you're going to a place where you're not already at. So for me, right. it, I consider it a return to natural. And maybe it's just semantics, okay. but it just does something to me when I hear some people say go natural. Because it's, I'm already, right. I, I was already natural. What I was doing was unnatural. You know, I, 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 but right. I, I digress from that. So 
Um, one of my earliest memories, one of my earliest hair memories, there's a couple, but this is the one that stands out. This is the one that I still have pain from. So my mom mm-hmm. used to take me to this hairdresser. Um, I can't remember his name, but she took me to him for a few years. And there was something, I think he was combing my hair too rough and he was hurting me and I was crying. And she mm-hmm. was telling him, you know, you don't have to comb her hair so hard. And he was like, no, I do because she has bad hair. And that has stuck with me until, until uh, probably until like 10 years ago, maybe even maybe even more recent than that, that I finally was able to let the, the pain go from that. Because really? I was like seven or eight. I was little. I was not like a teenager. Yeah. I was a little kid. And he said that to right. me. <clears throat> and it's like I could feel the heat on my neck because I was so embarrassed when he said it. Right. And I I believe that. And, you know, my whole life, my mom, when I was a little girl, like three, I had a, a jerry curl. And then from there, my my, uh, my hair was in relaxers. And then when my hair fell out, I had little wee ponytails all the time. And it's like my hair never got past a certain length, like really like past my chin, really. It never got any longer than that. Um, right. It would always look cute when I got my relaxer. And then two weeks later, after the first time I got wet, it would just be a, a mess. Right. Um, and but I didn't know any better because this is just what it was for for little black girls. I mean, we had a few girls who um, maybe when I say a few, I mean like one or two that had never had a relaxer, and you know they always had long, pretty hair. But I always thought, and I was always told told that it was because they were mixed mm-hmm. or they had Indian in them or something like that. Because we grew up oh, the way right. we grew up, everything was black and white. Everything was black and white. Right. So it was yeah, almost right. like the other races didn't exist. Um, mm-hmm. Every all of our issues, all everything went back to black and white. Um, so mm-hmm. whenever I was, saw a little girl that was brown like me with long hair, then it was because she's, you know, she's mixed. She's got a white parent or a white grandparent. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, wow. So yeah. I had a lot of I was always uncomfortable about my hair because it always was a mess. I mean, it looked mm-hmm. the way, it looked, the way that it looked was typical for girls that I went to school with, you know, we were all putting the same crap in our hair and we were all getting the same result for the most part. So it was right. very typical, but I always was ashamed of how I looked <clears throat> when it came to my hair. <clears throat> and then as right. I started getting older and I started doing my hair on my own, then I started buying my own weaves and, like, making my own weaves, you know, doing what I could to conform to what I was taught was pretty. Right. Which right. was loose curls or straight hair um, or keeping mm-hmm. it in braids so that people wouldn't see your BBs, cuckabugs. That's the one, that's <laughs> the one I always hear, cuckabugs. <laughs> makes my feet fall to see yeah. people. The people said those things to me. Um, so right. that's what I did all the way all the way through my twenties. So what when that changed for me, um, I actually deployed to Afghanistan. Everyone knows I'm in the military, and mm-hmm. while I was there, first of all, I had a whole suitcase dedicated to just hair hair products <laughs> because taking care of black hair is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It requires tools. There's equipment. Mm -hmm. There's chemicals. Like, Mm -hmm. there's all kinds of stuff that's required to try to keep it, you know, somewhat reasonably decent looking. Um, Yeah, straight. They were like, straight, you know, looking nice. Mm -hmm. Well, I get there, not realizing the environment that I'm going to be in, the water was, had so so many chemicals in it that you could just smell the chemicals in the water. And Mm -hmm. within three weeks of me being there, most of my hair was gone. It broke off. Oh my god! So wow. I was just doing everything that I could. Like I was doing, you know, staying up all night when I should have been sleeping, putting braids in, just so I wouldn't have to be ashamed of the way that I looked. Right. Um, right. And I, I couldn't wait to get home so that I could, you know, try to re- recover my hair because it was gone. Like when I left, I had chin length hair. When I got back, I had some patches that were chin length, some patches that were just snap long, snap short. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Through the time that I was there, our situation kind of improved. We got some better quality water. So I actually did regrow some hair while I was gone, but it still was in terrible mm-hmm. shape when I got back. Right. So fast forward, I left in um, November, so I came back in November. Flash forward to that November coming home, I'm mm-hmm. trying to, you know, I'm back in the world now trying to get my hair to do something, but it was so badly damaged that nothing that I did would make it look nice. Like I, there was nothing I could do. And mm-hmm. literally, I was crying. I was in a fit of desperation. I literally took my husband's clippers and I shaved my entire head. Oh wow! There was wow. no transition. There was no, you know, thought process. I had no idea about people going, quote unquote, going natural. I, it, yeah. The whole yeah. phenomenon was lost on me at that moment. It was just an act of desperation because I was just exasperated right. with what I, with, with the damage that had been done to my hair. 
Right. And I was, I, when I tell you I never felt so free in my life, I kept my head shaved for like six months. I wore wigs. Because I was ashamed yeah. of my beauty bees, and I was ashamed of my cuckabugs, <laughs> and I was ashamed of my boyish face because I looked just like my brother. So I wore wigs. <laughs> but underneath that, you know, as soon as I walked through the door, that wig came off, and I threw it in the corner, and I was just rocking my bald head at home behind my closed doors. Um, right. And it was very freeing, and I learned so much about how much of my identity was wrapped up in my hair. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm mm-hmm. not this much of a talker, but this is like a, a, a subject that I, I don't really talk about it a lot unless somebody yes, unless yeah. people ask me. Um, but mm-hmm. there was a lot of growth that happened. So, you know, I spent six right. months. But the first thing that I noticed, and I, let me know if I go too long. First thing that I noticed no, no. was how, the, how terrible the condition of my scalp was. I mean, oh, my right. scalp, I had like psoriasis. I had bald patches. Like it was, my scalp was in terrible shape and you would never know it. Until you right. cut your hair, until you shave your head, you don't see how bad the, the condition was. So that was right. my first goal was to just get my my scalp healthy. And I spent mm-hmm. six months just babying my scalp. I kept my hair cut low. I rocked my wigs. And then I went to a school. Um, I think it was it was a drill sergeant school, but it was another school that I had gone to. And I decided, okay, I'm going to let my hair start growing out. And I did. I let it grow out, and I stayed there for, I think, two months. But by the time I got done, I had enough hair to put it in some cornrows. I still wore my wigs. I don't think anybody realized that I was bald underneath there. But, you know, (laughs) I just kind of took my time to to relearn my hair. And it was a really rough experience. Um, And it took me a long time to get get comfortable. And my husband Mm -hmm. didn't even know I was bald. When I tell you that. Oh, wow. When I say behind yeah, living doors, a lie. And that's, yeah, and that made it even more, mm-hmm. that made your hair come out even more because that's stress. Right. And and I'll never forget mm-hmm. the day that I told him that, that I had, you know, I was like, I got to tell you something. I want to show you something. And we were out of town, so we were in like a hotel. So I, I was like, mm-hmm. he was like, what? I took my wig off, and he got upset because he was like, what in the world is going on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not drastic, I'm not a very drastic person, so I don't do stuff, you know, I don't just be doing stuff. And when I do things, it's right. a more methodical than that. So he was just right. like, I can't, believe, I can't believe you did this. Like, you didn't even talk to me? Like, what what happened? Like, what, what did you do? <laughs> I'm like, I cut off my hair with your clippers while you were gone. <laughs> so, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's been a it's been a wonderful journey, and, and yeah, I'm very proud yeah. of my hair the way it is now. I'm not uncomfortable with my with my cuckabugs. I feel them, you know, right. put my hand back there and I feel them, and I'm not ashamed of them. I don't care who sees them. Right. And I'm, I'm I will never go back. Right. Right. I, right. I, I, I think that's important. You know, that's yeah, and see, that's you growing into yourself, and see, and mm-hmm. you had the you had the ability mentally to say something's wrong and mm-hmm. I need to fix this. But see, the women that I have, uh, even some in my family, they, you'll never, they, they will glue it to their scalp before mm-hmm. they will let you see anything like that. Before, I mean, I don't, I'm not saying you go out there, you go raggedy, like you said, you go and you buy a wig, but in the meantime, you start taking care of your hair. Because mm-hmm. really, that's telling yeah. you what it's doing to your hair is doing to your body as well. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And so, a lot of stress. And so, I am, that um, I see that as uh, uh, spiritual growth, you know? Mm-hmm. Because you, you've yeah. been able to allow that to put that to the wayside and then you can grow in other areas. It's just like I had to let Jeffrey go in order to open up myself for other opportunities to go to find another uh, a guy. And, and I'm looking for specifics. I ain't looking for just any kind. But, you know, you were looking for something specific. You were looking for you. Mm-hmm. And I love right. that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think that's that's real important. Um, mm-hmm. just finally just letting go because it sounds like mm-hmm. it was a huge burden, you know, yes. to try to keep up with all these different hairstyles. I mean, still, you, I'm, I'm sure you have to deal with different hairstyles now because uh, you, you have a lot of hair right now that, that I know mm-hmm. that you gotta you got to kind of work your way through and figure out what you want and stuff like that. But, you know, mm-hmm. it's the fact that you know that it's, that it's yours, 
Uh, mm-hmm. You're doing it yourself. Like uh, for me, um, and, I, and I grew my, I've been growing my hair out for the last about two and a half years now. Mm-hmm. And uh, for me, I, I, I grew my hair out because I would find barbers and then and mm. they would find barbers and then they would end up, well, I did it for two reasons. I, one was I would find barbers and then they end up either too hard to reach Mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. they end up leaving their shop and going somewhere else that was way too far out the way from me. I got tired of dealing with that. Uh, right, the, right. The second, the, the second reason I grew out my hair is because this is something that I always wanted to do. I always wanted to grow my hair out. Uh, I, I, at, the, at that time, I just got out of the reserves, and mm-hmm. so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. You know, I'm getting a little bit older now. I'm um, and in my thirties, you know, now is the mm-hmm. time for me to really start um, growing my hair and and really seeing what it's like. Because I think something in, in your life, at least for me, some some things in my life, especially if it's something that you always want to do, you have to give yourself a chance to express that feeling and, and, mm-hmm. and just to see what it's about. Right. And that's what really growing my hair was for me. It was really expressing myself, being doing something that I that I really wanted to do, and and I love. I mean, I love having my hair now. I mean, I really do like it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, right, you know, because you love yourself. Is, right, you know? right, 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 yeah. right. But I mean, and but that's even that's now, growth, huh? Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, even now, especially for people around my age, especially for men uh, around my age. You know, you don't see too much guys really growing their hair. You see, I see right now. I see a lot more guys that are bald, you know, mm-hmm. or, right. or really, right. really short cut. So I mean, I so in some cases it feels uncomfortable because I know people mm-hmm. are looking right. at me, and right. and and having locks in your hair it gives off a certain perception, mm-hmm. right? That the, and, that the world and, has said that's what it's supposed to be, you know. Right, that's right. It's yeah. the world. But but you st- but I still know this, you know what I'm saying. Right. It's not like I, I'm I'm blind to it or I'm, I'm I'm ignorant to you know what the world thinks about it. I still know right. this, so I, I mean I know that people see me in a certain way, but right. I mean it still feels good to get through all of the I guess frustrations of trying to grow mm-hmm. my hair, going through different stages, going in and out of ugly, what, what, what I call ugly stages, when, it's, when your hair just looks real crazy no, and there's really nothing that you can do I, I about it. That. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I, but, but it does take a lot of growth, and it takes a lot of patience, and that's one of the mm-hmm. things that it taught me growing, growing my hair out is having a lot of patience. Mm-hmm. Right. That's and true, yeah. and and honestly, yeah. like I think people stare at you because you keep yourself so together. Like you, you never have a lock out of place. You know, it, right. it, it's obvious right. you take a lot of pride in it. You take a lot of time, mm-hmm. and I think that gets mm-hmm. a lot of attention too. So I think that a right. lot of attention that you get, I'm sure some of that is people, you know, looking at your nonconformity. But I think there's also people who really see the beauty and the amount of work and time that you put into it because it's obvious when you see it. Because <clears throat> you, it's no, obvious. I mean, you, it's beautiful. I'll be. I be wanting to do the, the Caucasian thing, like, can I touch it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want everybody to know that she really did that, too, in the car. Like, okay, I touch your hair. I, I see what it feels like. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. I'm about to do the Becky thing. You can't please touch your hair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean but that's I mean that's true though. It, it I think is when I saw him because the first I think the ugly stage was when you were twist doing them twists. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I'm just like, Okay, that I sorta of like it, but you need to shape it up, you know, it's when I come to Maryland. And mm-hmm. but I think that was a a stage because it had to be something on the inside of you saying because you've always wanted to grow your hair out, and then somebody would say, you don't need to do that because what the world, because the, what the Caucasian uh, community, let's just uh, be real, are saying mm-hmm. about people with locks and with people with, uh, well, they call them threads and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah. but when you see these people, they're more comfortable with themselves than the ones who are going to shave their hair every, every uh, and 
to get it shaved and shaped up. And, you know, you can shape it up. You can make it look good. But you don't have mm-hmm. to right. try to make, try to, I need to put a scarf on my hair to do, so I can get some waves. I want some waves. That's cause, so you can have good hair. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Because you're feeding yeah. into that. So yeah, you mm-hmm. keep, exactly. And that and you know, keeps you. I didn't down. realize. Go ahead. I was going to say, I didn't realize how much of that I had until I didn't mm-hmm. have it anymore. Because, like I said, right. I didn't, right. see, a lot of women now, they transition, you know, they, they let their relaxed hair grow to a certain length, and then when they cut their hair, then it's not such a drastic change. I didn't have that. It was, it was like, noble, this is who you are now. <clears throat> and so right. there was a, right. lot of, a, a lot of really quick adjustments that I had to make and a mm-hmm. lot of realizations that I had to make about myself and my opinions about my hair, my identity, and black women in general, because I had exactly. a lot of baggage that was on me that was tied up in my right. my nappy roots. I had a lot of baggage. Um, right. And it Stop took a long time. To, well, no, I'm saying it as a figure of speech. You know, I'm saying it as oh, a figure of speech. Because, okay. uh, yeah. honestly, my hair's not nappy. It's just really tightly coiled, you know? Yeah. Right. And, I, and, I, and I understand that. But it, at the time, but it's I, just, I, had the language, I only had the language any- that I was given. Yeah, right. you can do anything right. with it. But you can say that, but then we had nieces and nephews who had what everybody thought was the, the perfect hair, and they had issues. It, you can never in this society, in this Caucasian society, you, you, they don't ever want you to be comfortable. It, it's the mere fact that you have melanin in your skin, they're going to find something. And I remember, mm-hmm. uh, who was it, uh, Madison, she was telling me something, and uh, she had come to Dallas to stay with me. Uh, Dad had gone, uh, he was in Iraq or somewhere, and I forget what country, so I'm saying, or somewhere, uh, but I'm saying uh, my whole goal is to say that they were there with me for a summer. And uh, she was going through something, and she said, because, see, my hair is not straight because she has, I call my brother is, and I will tell him this. I'm not telling you something I haven't told him from the beginning. He has the United Nations of the family. He had the Asian child. He had the black child. He had the white child. And uh, uh, Ma- uh, not Maddie. Well, not Maddie, though. What's her name? Oh, my God. She was blonde hair, blue eyed. You know who I'm talking about. I can't think of her name right now. Uh. He was Allison. Allison. Yeah. Allison was the quintessential white girl in everything. I mean, but she was so it. She never had that um, that hang up because she grew up around so many different people. And I, right. I would tell uh, Kim, mm-hmm. you need to keep them like this. Don't let the world uh, uh, the, 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 decide who is what they are. You know, just. This is this is this is a blessing. You you don't know what this is, but I was talking to Madison, and I don't want to get off to what I was trying to say. And she was just like, "Well, you know, my hair is not straight, and I can't." I was just like, "I said you have," and she had a head full of beautiful black hair, and I was just mm-hmm. like, "Madison, um, you got you have a head full of beautiful hair." I said, "What are you talking about?" And she didn't know. And so what I did was. I said, your hair can be straight. It can be curly. I said, and you don't have to do anything to it. I mean, not really. I said, you can do what you want to do with your hair. And so we were talking about mm-hmm. talking about it. And so I would always flat iron my hair when I went somewhere because I was trying to be, um, oh, what do you call it? I was trying to fit into the Caucasian, what they felt was a you the trying standard, to do. Beauty standard. The, mm-hmm. the standard, yep. you know. Yep. But I would always flat iron my hair. And sometimes I would braid mm-hmm. it up or, you know, I would do whatever. So I flat ironed her hair. I was just like, now, I haven't put chemicals in your hair. I haven't put anything in your hair. I said, now, what are you going to say? I said, what do, you, what do you think now? I said, you can go from curly to straight without killing your, without, and she, it was just like a whole world changed. But she still had that thing, mm-hmm. that stigma of being, a black girl with curly hair that it really it curled up. But then when mm-hmm. right. uh, Allie and Zanita came, I remember they came down to uh, Maryland and they stayed with me for uh, for a bit. And so I, we didn't we didn't grow up and we didn't grow up. Caucasians grew up with their hair just all over their heads. 
black people didn't do that, you know, because I remember my grandmother said, if your hair is loose all over your head, that's where your mind is, too. You need to – so they came over, mm-hmm. and I was – I put um, – Oh, what do they call it? Uh, it was a braid, but it was like, uh, what do they call it? Not a corn, corn roll, but it was, they call it, uh, whatever they call it. I put two on Madison's hair. And I was just like, uh, come on, uh, Zanita. And I'm just like, how am I going to do this? Because her hair was a bone straight. So mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I sprayed it, and I put, two, I, they had the same, I put the two same braids in their hair, her hair, I said, Allie, come on. What are you going to do? I was just like, you are not going to be walking around here with your hair just loose like this. I said, you're not a grown woman. I said, you're a child. I said, you know, I said uh, Madison's got her hair done. And Zanita's got, you're going to do yours too. So I sprayed it down because I knew that it wasn't going to stay. So I sprayed it down with some water. I braided it up. And she would turn into a totally different child. Madison turned into a totally different child. And so they all went. Right. Where, where we had to go, we would get in the car, we would go somewhere, and, and people would look at me, and they were just, because they were saying, Auntie, hey, Aunt Paula, can we do this? For? And I was just like, and they were just like, that's your aunt? And they're looking at Zanita, and they're looking at Allie, and they're looking at, oh, uh, they knew that probably uh, Madison was, could possibly be mine, but then you got the blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl, and then you got the Asian girl, and I'm just like, oh, my God. But I didn't, I didn't treat them any different. And that's mm-hmm, with the mm-hmm. world, in a perfect world, that's the way it should be, but it's not. But if you don't teach them this thing, and my goal with Tiffany, when Tiffany would come, I stopped. I was just like, I don't want to put this in. I don't want her to think that weave is the way to go. So I started mm-hmm. doing little things in her hair, and then she would get the mirror, and she would look at it. Oh, I, I said, which one? You like that? I said, you want me, or do you want me to do it another way? I like it. I like it. I was just like, oh, okay, you know, this is good. But you have to give that to your children. And and sure. one person's hair is not going to be the, the other person's hair. But they mm-hmm. all, you can all make them comfortable. And it, the, having your hair just loose, that, that that's not, but that's their, that is the, uh, it's a it's a thing that they that they hold over you to say that their hair is better hair because they can do X Y and Z. But then if you're gonna say that, then I don't get life. So uh, what do you? Well, say that's about not true. Black people, black people yeah, can't get life. It's so, so yeah. so yeah. Have you ever black seen people... a black person with life? Real yeah. serious. Mm-hmm. I mean, you want me to give their name? I'm not gonna put people. <laughs> no, you don't get their name. But where were they? Were they living here? On Earth, yes. Take it, life. All right. Um, I mean, I mean, I mean, at, I mean, at the top of, the, I mean, at, when when it comes down to it, um, uh-huh. people. I mean, there are cases where people try to make black people feel uncomfortable about their yeah. hair, which the, the, right. that is that is true. Um, right. But when it when it boils down to it. Um, if everybody was comfortable about yes. their hair or their cells, right. you wouldn't have any any of that. You mm-hmm. see what I'm right. saying? Exactly. So, yeah. So and I, I think the main goal. yeah, and I think that's what you're trying to say. Your main goal was to help everybody be comfortable with themselves, <laughs> and on top right. of that, be comfortable with each other and, and right. their differences exactly. that they clearly have, but they might not mm-hmm. understand. You know. Because yeah, they're so young, but they they know that right. there's a difference, though, you know. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. And then you will have people around you who will make that that change. But if you give them the answers that they need to have, then they won't. They won't. Uh, they they'll have something back for you. I remember they would always say, "Oh, you're such a pretty girl. You have such beautiful hair. You so just." And I'm just like, and I can read too. You know, I I can spell and I can do. It, it, it's just more to me than you keep uh, talking about my freaking hair. But it was, mm-hmm. and I'm not telling you. They said it was good. I didn't think it was no good hair. And I watched mm-hmm. it one time. That's how I knew it wasn't good hair. Uh, <laughs> but I watched mm-hmm. it, and I got tired of combing it, and I was just like, oh, I'll just lay down, and I'll get up in the morning, and I'll do what I need to do. And it was not. <laughs> that, that didn't happen. <laughs> I went to get that comb, and I couldn't get because my hair was very, very thick. 
it was very, very long, but it was very, very thick. And then you go lay on it, and then it's getting tangled up, and it's doing all this stuff. And my mom mm-hmm. was, and I don't, you all don't remember, but my mother used to be in the hospital all the time. I remember one time my mom went to the hospital, and she was in there for like a year, you know. And so yeah. we had to, and uh, and we'll talk about that uh, in another subject because we need to talk about that because this in this last uh, about her life as when she before she passed it, it was. Mm-hmm. I I, uh, I don't want to talk about that because we need to because that's a long story. But I remember I, if you could if I ever got it if I got it wet, okay, I could comb it. I know that mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I in my um uh, my uh, time when I changed from going natural because. I wanted to be what the other people had too, because my mom was forever. She was saying, "No, you don't. You don't want to do a relaxer." I'm just like, "Yeah, I want to do a relaxer. I want. I want because I want my hair to be straight." It was not doing nothing but mm-hmm. taking your hair out. And so right. I came when I got on my own, and I had to go. And it was sort of like the story of James. And they would say, "Oh, okay, we're gonna put a relaxer in there." I said, "No." I said, "What you need to do is just to wash it." And then we'll go from there and then see what we need to do with it. But they mm-hmm. would throw their relaxer in there, and they would never t- – and I'm just like, it's, this is too long. This is burning, and you can take this out, you know. And, yeah. and it got to the point that I had cut my hair because it was – I, I would rub my hand through my hair, and it was like a, my hand was a razor blade. That my yeah, hair, I, I, I had a lot of that. I had a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, oh, my God. So I went there, and I told the girl, I said, I just want you to cut it off. You know, just before I came to Maryland, you remember when I had my hair that short, James? Mm-hmm. When I came yeah. there, I had cut it all off. And then I got back into the, because it was so short, I didn't, I wasn't accustomed to the natural thing. And then I was working mm-hmm. in corporate America, and I was just like, so I went. And after it grew out, you know, it started to get a little kinky, uh, a little nappy. We can call it nappy. And so, uh, and so I go back to the – but they didn't know what they were doing. I'm just like, you don't have to relax my hair. I said, yes. Yeah. But they would always throw I, something in it. Huh? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, always, I always had issues with that. That's why I stopped going to beauticians because it's like yeah. – they almost, almost like they, were, they resented my natural hair. It's like they were either – unnecessarily rough or they were trying to throw some chemicals in it or put in too much heat and it was exactly just, it was a, a nightmare and that's that's when I stopped letting people put their hands in my head uh, yeah okay. and you have to do that and I and you really because you don't know what people are thinking or feeling and I remember when I did that washing thing and went to sleep on it and I woke up and my dad gave me that look and he was just like um where are you going baby uh, I'm going I'm going outside I'm going to play uh, uh, really? What, what you gonna do with your hair? And I'm just like, mm-hmm. and then I, I looked at him because I turned because I'm. The, it was something changed in his voice, and I turned to look at him, and he was looking at me like this poor child. And I said, what you gonna do with your hair? And I was just like, and I knew that I was jacked up at that point, and I was just like, um, mm-hmm. I guess I'll pull it in a ponytail. He said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna call your aunt Rose. And I'm gonna send you down there for her to um, they, they and for people who don't know what we did, what the white people did, they literally put an iron to their hair to do because they would go and get it curled, and then to get it straight, mm-hmm. they literally put it uh, because the curls gave them more body. And so, but we went down there and Rose, oh my God, oh my, and I'm tender headed, and and I, for mm-hmm. those who don't know what that means, the black people do. I was I was very sensitive. My scalp was very sensitive. Hey, well, uh, slap that grease up in my head. <laughs> I just threw that rock comb in there. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. I was like, ooh. I, feel, I, feel like I can hear it popping. I said, I can hear it popping. I can hear the grease popping. <laughs> yes. And I was like, She's like, yes, just this, uh, that, 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 that's not, that's not this, uh, hot comb. I was like, burn, Rose, you burn me. That's not this, this straight iron. It's, it's that, it's that green, it's the, she said it was. I was like, no, Either it's way, not. I, I never understood that. My mom used to do that to me, and I'm like, it doesn't matter if it's the hot comb or the grease. It's still 4,000 degrees. It's hot. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, oh, my God. Wow. I was just like, and 
I got home, and I was just like, Dad, it was, and he smiled. And I was just like, okay. Yeah, so uh, at that point, the birds didn't feel so bad, you know. And mm-hmm. I, I think I went and I, um, what did I do? Because she straightened it. Did I put flowers right. in there? I did something. She straightened it, and she left it down. My mom didn't do that. So I was just like, I was feeling like a grown-up, you know. I thought I went to school the next day because I had a head full of hair. And I've never worn it mm-hmm. down. They always, my mom would always braid the top and put it in a ponytail and braid it. And then she would braid the bottom and put it in a ponytail. And then she would wrap the ponytails around each other. So you never knew uh, what, the, uh, nobody never knew what my hair was like. So they were just like, right. is that a wig? Is that a wig? And I'm just like, no. And then they started, and then the white girl, the black girl, the white girl, people wanted to put your hands in the hair. And I didn't care at that point, you know, because they just wanted to feel it. And and I'm just like, and the white, but the black people were like, oh, you think you're white, you Oreo, you this that, and the other, and I'm just like, oh my god, it was just like it was a nightmare, you know. But that yeah. our hair is is something it it ain't nothing to play with, you know. And you right. and you know you never you never heard about uh, people washing people's feet with their hair till they got to the Greek side of the Bible. And now all of a sudden they were talking about the white people, you know, that it was mm-hmm. that they took the black people out of the Old Testament because you knew that's what they were talking about, whether you wanted to believe it or not. And and then you wanted to be that, you know, because that, that has to be. And then they're telling you that you're this, that, and the other. But it was it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare of the – you're trying to – because all my friends were white as it was because the white people mm-hmm. would take you as you were. Um uh, let me put, let me call them Caucasians because uh, to me, when you say white, you're talking about uh, different people when you say white. But the Caucasians, were, the, my Caucasian friends would take me as I was. They didn't, they weren't trying to make you better. They weren't trying to make you worse. They you uh, how yeah. you came, that's what you were. So, so, let, so let's talk. So, yeah, yeah. So let's talk about let, let's talk about that a little bit. You know, because okay. um, it, it's almost like who are you trying to impress when it comes when it comes yeah. down to it. Because and I and I experienced the same things as as you experienced. I actually experienced right. more hatred from black people in mm-hmm. the way that I that I wear my hair, right? Than mm-hmm. I experienced it from the say Caucasian. It's gonna stay with stay with the same time well, from Caucasians, right? So mm-hmm. right. you know what I'm saying. So who who are you know when it comes down to who are we trying to impress? You know, and, and huh. why is it that why when we're trying to develop ourselves, especially within a black community, when it comes to uh, our hair or, re- or, reach- or trying to re-naturalize ourselves with our hair, mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah. you know, why do we get so much kickback, you know? Because I know um, as they far know as... I have, right. I have uh, an opinion on this. So for uh, me, I, and I hope you got your entire question out, but... And for no, me, and I, and I don't like to think so narrow as just black and white because the the world is bigger than that, especially now. Yes. I think that other nationalities, for them now, it's just a curiosity, and they don't really have mm-hmm. enough of an understanding to have an opinion one way or another. I mean, they may think it's quote-unquote professional or quote-unquote unprofessional, but that's kind of the limit because they don't really even have the language to talk about it with us. Right. So, right. And at the same time, we are striving to fit into this mold that they told us is quote unquote acceptable. But at the mm-hmm. end of the day, we are each other's toughest critics. Yes. Right. The, the, right. You receive, you will, you know, no matter what, what I do with my hair, I go to work. The white, the the other people will be curious about it, but it's the black women who are going to be judging me because of what I've done or didn't do. Exactly. And, right. and they, and but they're not judging your appearance. They're judging who they. They'll say, "Who does she think she is?" And how do you know? You don't know what I'm thinking because guess what? You're not in my head. But it's it's all about. And going back to James' question, I mean, not that you did that got off the question, but it it uh-huh. going back to thinking about that. It's a lot of it is because they have not accepted themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, right. it, it, it's 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 a slave it's a slavery hit everybody. But then when you have the audacity and see, we grew up a little bit different than most people. And I have to say, mm-hmm. I have to continue to say that. And people are going to look at us differently because we had a different mentality. 
And so mm-hmm. then they're gonna think that we thought that we were one thing when we were something else, and it wasn't. And it wasn't that. So do well, you have I have to, to agree with you on that. Yeah, and so you have, yeah, to, have to agree with you. Okay. Huh? No, I, 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 I'll I'll let you finish up, but I do have to say something. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Because uh, you know me. Okay. All right. So, but yeah, I had to. I had to agree with you on that because. Uh, and I, and I think this goes all across the board. Um, yeah. Usually, uh, if you have quote haters end quote, mm-hmm. right? It's because you are showing characteristics either they wish they had, yeah. or or something that you know they wish they they had enough courage to do themselves. Right. So, yeah. in, in order to make themselves feel better about the, that their situation, they'll mm-hmm. talk trash about you and try to get you to feel how they actually feel at that moment. Right, right. Does exactly. that make sense? But, but mm-hmm. they don't just go at you by themselves. They try to get everybody else on board to go against you because their whole goal is to break you down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, of course, because because even feeling like that is a weak, char- uh, weak characteristic. Yeah. Okay, right. when you when you're just hating on somebody for something else um, they're doing, you know, mm-hmm. then uh, of course they're gonna try to get more people to kind of justify what they're saying, yeah, and, and of course they're gonna get yeah, and of course they're gonna get people who are just like them, you know, what I'm saying not right. not willing to to take those steps, you know, what I'm saying because it's easy, it's it's really easy to talk trash about somebody else, right? Right. It's right. harder. Mm-hmm to actually go through the pain, right, and go through the suffering and then finally mm-hmm. achieving the goals that you want. You know what I'm saying? That right. that takes work. Right. Especially when it when it comes to hair. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I totally agree with you on that. Totally agree with yeah. you. Yeah. And, and I think and then, yeah, and I, we got like go ahead. I'm I'm just gonna um uh, we have like fifteen minutes. I just wanted to say that so people won't think we're trying to cut and we're trying to shorten it. But and I know right. you guys have to go to work in the morning, but that is this is something that we need to because it goes from one thing to the to the next, and it's always it's because we are uncomfortable with ourselves that we that we mm-hmm. can't that we we are you know even now it's still we're trying to put now I wear I'll don a spank because uh, I don't like. I don't like stuff jiggling. I will don a, a spank, uh, so help me God, yeah, if I have to. But I'm not trying to reshape my body. I'm not sure, but we have gotten to the point that we're trying to reshape what God has given us, trying to take the, the booty away, trying to take the big lips away, trying to take the, the curly hair away. And then we're going to have to, and at the point of us doing this, and it's and it's a bone of contention because people are still going through what I'm going through right now. I didn't know that we still had a color a colorization uh, issue. You know? Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm just like, oh, really? At two, mm-hmm. you're still doing this? I mean, uh, uh, get mm-hmm. out of here. You mm-hmm. are no different than anybody else, and you're not. What, what are you talking about? But we have to, and it's um. Uh, it's something that we it's something on the inside of us. And it's because we don't see ourselves one on television, we don't see ourselves, we don't have um uh, somebody around us to show us a different a different way of living that we can right. be better. That's and so important. It, yes, it's very, very imagery, important. Imagery is very important and it's it, and when you don't see yourself reflected, it's easy to yes. feel like you don't belong, like you feel out of place because you don't see yourself. I mean, even to this day, exactly. mm-hmm. now you see, you know, natural haired women more than before, but even right. still, when you see the quote unquote natural haired women as people who naturally have loose curls, you don't see, you know, mm-hmm. the women who are dark skinned with Kinky, right. Kinky mind. You don't see that. Right. Except they, I mean, they'll allow yeah. one or two. Like Lupita Nyong'o right. is, you know, she's been glorified. She's a great actress. I don't want to take it away from her. But right now, she's their mm-hmm. one. You know, she's the one that's allowed right now. But you don't see yeah. much more than that. Yeah, and that kind of gets onto my mind. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I know. I, I was, she said somebody, and I missed the person that she was talking about. 
Oh, Lupita Nyong'o. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, and that, and that kind of brings me uh, to my next topic, like yeah. when, it, when, it, when, when it comes to imagery, you know, mm-hmm. and when you do see um, black folks on TV, you know, it's always the black folks, not even nowadays, they, they, black folks that are walking around here unnatural. They have uh-huh. these long, blind wigs. Like I, and, I, and I say music videos specifically because this is mostly what I see, and I know this is what really attracts the younger crowd is music. So you right. uh, you see you see these women now that have long hair. They're getting all mm-hmm. these injections, like butt oh, injections, yes. uh, lip injections, um, mm-hmm. even uh, like Little Kim, which I, who I thought was a very very beautiful woman. You know, yeah, getting getting, getting all this, and now she doesn't yeah, really look yeah. like a human being. Yeah, right, she looks like a, exactly. she looks more like a muppet than a person at this point. And I'm not teasing, exactly. I, I'm not teasing, but it's her her look is so extreme that it's like outside of the realm of what looks human to me. Right, right, right. And I'm just like, and, and who I, are you trying to be? And I think she thinks it's mm-hmm. okay. And then we got. Well, I mean, it's uh, it. it I mean, it, to them, especially in this industry, this is what they're told is the, the uh, this is what beauty is, you know what I'm saying? So in order to keep up and to maintain, and especially as a woman, um, when you hit a certain age, you believe that you have to continue to look like you did in your 20s. Which, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's, not, that's not possible you know what i'm saying you have to right. grow you have to mature you know you don't have to hold right. on you can still look beautiful even as an older woman there's a lot of beautiful old, older women you know right. that that are that are still in the industry you know and 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 kept themselves or or renaturalized themselves or whatever you know and, and still look good doing that you know you mm-hmm. don't have to do uh, you know i just want people to know you don't have to take these extremes to look exactly. beautiful and, and and the and the fact is if you if you if you're doing it for like a guy or something like that, you think men care? Men, most men do not care. At the end of the day, <laughs> mm-hmm. we do not really, care. You know what I'm saying? They rather you have a little pooch because they, they like that. They rather you have boobs. They they like that. They rather you. That is it's all about how you carry yourself. They're looking at that. Look. They're looking at uh, a bit the way I see it. Uh, but you're you're right, James. You're the one that needs to be talking about that, yeah. not me, though. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, it's, and it's, every guy has their own own thing. Everybody likes what what they like. So I mean, some right. guys like skinny girls. Some girls, some guys like like bigger women. You know, some guys like more athletic women. You know, it's all about their preference. But you know, these these high standards that you put yourself through it's really not yeah. it's, 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 it's really impossible standards for the most part but you know mm-hmm. it's really not necessary especially if you're trying to you know keep up with some of the guys and hoping that like, y'all hope the guys are look you know like like how i look you know well, see, right. and, and it's really about, and it's really huh i was gonna say when you talk about you know that that image that you see in you know black pop culture Mm-hmm. A lot of that is necessary for the type of men they're trying to get because a lot of these women, and I'm not saying, I'm generalizing, okay, this is not 100%, okay, this is just me generalizing. A lot of these women right. are trying to attain a lifestyle. They're not trying mm-hmm. to go out there. Their job is to go out there and find the man that's making the amount of money that's going to allow them to keep, to keep living their lifestyle. So the, there is a standard of beauty that exists in that realm. Uh-huh. And unfortunately uh-huh. for the rest of us, that's what we see Uh-oh. in the news media. That's what we see on television. Um, Uh-oh. So that, you, you, about, you, about, you, about, you about to set it off, you about to set it off. You about to, 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 uh, you about no, to pull I mean, some strings out here. That's what it is. I mean, you, these people are trying to obtain a lifestyle. That is their job. Their job is to try to look completely flawless, like they step off of the page of a magazine so that they don't have to actually go out there and earn a, a wage. You know, their, their job is being kept. And unfortunately, that's who we see. Those are the images that we see. We don't see any affirming images of normal-looking women, you know, regular-looking right. women. It's getting to the point now that right. when you see a regular face, it's like, what's wrong with this, that regular-looking yeah. face? Because you, yeah, exactly. you're so used to seeing the Kardashians and the, you know, all, mm-hmm. you, know you, you name the person off of television that you see today. You're so used to seeing that, that that mm-hmm. is, in our opinion, the norm. 
Right. Right. But I mean, who whose fault is that really? I mean, I know there is a industry that's that's pushing that's that's pushing some of this narrative that that's out there, right? But mm-hmm. let's just let's just say, you know, what I'm saying, if all women decided to to finally be who they want to be, you know, what I'm saying, who really has control of that? Because mm-hmm. if you if you if you decided to be be like, okay, you know what? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to try to live up to these fullest standards anymore. I'm just mm-hmm. going to be who I want to be. And if all women decide to do that at once, the whole industry would change because it's the right. industry that you lead in. And if mm-hmm. as long right. as you are picking your standard of beauty over what somebody else says that you should look like, then mm-hmm. all that would change. No, I agree. Right. All that would change. A long way from everybody changing. Oh direction. yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I can say this, and um, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Kane, I remember uh, we were talking, and I sort of, it, 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 you know me, and I want to speak it out of my mouth, and I'm just like a pressure cooker. After a certain point, I got to say something. He kept saying, well, mm-hmm. you know, I like short hair, but I like it straight. I like straight. I'm just like, okay, but uh, I said, do you know what people have to, what women have to go through to get even, to even get that standard of straightness? I said, because you're, you're only, you're, those chemicals are going into your body, but mm-hmm. they on regular men seeing television, they are making that their standard of beauty. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, this what you're seeing on television is something that's not real, and they don't see right. that. And see, that's that's they're after the men. If they can get the men, they're gonna get the women because the women, the ones who they're gonna get the women who want a man because you have those who are gay, you know, blah blah blah. But you're going that that's that's they're gonna get that, and so it's mm-hmm. it's sort of discombobulating that when you see that. I remember I was. Um, we were somewhere, and the guy was just like, uh, yeah, because, you know, I like him with that long hair, that lo- long flowing hair. And I'm just like, well, who the hell are you talking about? And because right. it ain't nobody. And I, I've heard men say, you know, I don't like it. I don't want no nappy-headed woman. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you, you get there's, over there. There's a lot of people. There mm-hmm. are a lot of people responsible, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's mm-hmm. not just the industry. It's what we do to ourselves as black women. It's what mm-hmm. our men right. are doing to us. It's what, you know, it's, it's, there's exactly. a lot of hands in the pot, I guess. It's, the book doesn't just stop with one, with, at one exactly. place. If that, if that makes sense. Right. 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 Just look at that, uh, the one that came from Kenya, that, uh, of Saputa. Oh, God, I don't want to um, butcher her name. She's a model. She's a, a actress. She's dark-skinned. She, 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 ha- she is a beautiful girl. Um, you know who I'm talking about? I think I think you're talking about Lupita Nyong'o. I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah that's, that's her. her. Yeah, same that's, person. That's her. <laughs> yes, and we and we see that, but we're but we. One thing I've learned when you when you get stressed out and when you start doing things, it 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 uh, puts weight on you. It makes your hair mm-hmm. come out. And you're wanting all this stuff, but you're stressing out the one that you uh, say that you're loving, and then they'll get someone that looks the standard that they think that they're looking for, and they're stressing them out and trying to kill them. And it's like you, I say, because you have not accepted yourself. And yeah, you and, I, and I, unfortunately, I feel that Lupita, Lupita Nyong'o is, she's being, by the, by the market, she's being fetishized. She's been exoticized. You know, they don't mm-hmm. accept other women that look like her, they accept her because she's exotic. Just like, yes. you know, for a long time in the 90s, men were, white men were attracted to Asian women because that was exotic. Yes. Mm-hmm. So yes. they're not, she has not, she, has, that's why I said that, they're, you know, she's their one right now. It's because men look right. at her, and they look at her sexually, and, but they don't mm-hmm. see her as a human being, and they don't see the millions of other women who look like her. Right. And we don't see our men like that either. A Diamond Hunsu. And he is the Diamond Hunsu, um, what's his name? The other one, he's from Africa as well. It they have they do that that um oh, what is it? Like when you're confident, they they exude that confidence. 
because they grew up with their own people. They grew up knowing who they are, and we think we're going to get with them, and we're going to change them. These men are hard as they are. You are going to conform to it, or they're not going to get with you. And it's just we have got to we have got to see the beauty of ourselves. And I, and I, and I can't I can't stress that enough. It's not it's not um, looking a certain way. Right. So um, right. I agree. So yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I I, I mean, I really enjoyed this topic. I uh, hear. Yeah. I think it was real informative. Uh, mm-hmm. I think we had a lot of points that uh, we that we need to hit. You know, nope. and um, I hope I hope the message was able to get out there, and I'm and I'm sure it will. And um, yes. and on that note, I think it's about time to close it out. <laughs> yes, and I, I, uh, and I hate that. I hate we having to leave you. Yeah. We enjoyed you. This is what we do on a, on a daily basis. We love to talk. Mm-hmm. We we grew up doing this and 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 uh, reasoning with each other, not just it is. Yeah, we had our stigmas, stigmas, you know, we had this color issue. That's just part of the thing. But in, as a, but we loved each other. And right. that's where mm-hmm. I want to to take out to the world is the love. It's not mm-hmm. a sexual love. It's, just, it's, it's a, what is it, something that when you're, oh, God, when you're married to someone and you take that vow and it's, you have to do it for life, that is something that you do for life. You may get mad at them, you may, but that love is always there, and uh-huh. it, is, it has nothing to do with the blood link. It has to do with you making that commitment to it. And so we're gonna say this, and we love you. We hope you all enjoyed yourself, and and we're. Um, I'm going to turn this over to them and to end it all over. But I wanted you to know that we do on our a podcast we. Do have a spot that you can to get on there and say what you want to say or uh, become a part of uh, of our um, just to have something to say about it. And we're gonna we're looking at doing once a week a, a live episode. So tell us what you think. And so I'm gonna turn this over to James. Uh, well, to, to Tiffany, so she can turn it over to James, and we can say adieu. We love you, and you have a blessed night, Tiffany. Thank you, Paula. Um, actually, she said what I was going to say. We do invite you to give your opinion. Tell your story. Tell us about what took you back to natural. Um, I'm curious mm. to hear what you have to say about that. Um, as, our, yeah. as I mentioned last week, you can email any one of us um, by clicking on our pictures. If you go to tiesatbind.com, uh, you can click mm-hmm. on any of our pictures and you can email us directly, or you can comment in, at the bottom of any of our uh, videos or uh, podcasts. Just go down to the bottom, comment, leave your opinion your point of view, mm-hmm. your story. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Good night. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, I'd like to end, uh, end this meeting by saying um, we all go through our different trials and our different tribulations through life. Uh, I, I think it's the most important thing here is really understanding who you are. And sometimes mm-hmm. that, that might start with your hair, you know. And I, and I think right. it was good that we were able to go – hit this subject today because, you know, you're, you're going to be faced with adversity no matter what you do. Even mm-hmm. if you walk in there with a, a weave on, a wig on, you know, uh, mm-hmm. makeup on, you're going, to, you're going to have problems regardless. Mm-hmm. But my right. main goal is to help you figure out who you want to be, you know, right. yeah, because happiness never starts from outside. Happiness yeah. starts from within. And as soon as you start to love yourself, you can actually start to love other people a little more. So, yeah. uh, again, uh, we love y'all, and I hope you got something from this. And definitely hit us up, email us. Um, like, like Paul said, hopefully down the road, soon down the road, not hopefully, but soon down the road, we'll be doing live shows so we can actually have people uh, communicating with us uh, right then and there. Mm-hmm. So we love y'all and hope to speak to you soon. Yes. Uh, again, we say toodles. Love you. Uh, we'll see you again next week. Bye.